my name is Rachel and I'm here today to film a feminist video. So like a year ago, I started making some videos that were like collections of five recommendations around a topic. Those topics were LGBT, feminist, mental health and diverse. I stopped making them. I think I made one of each. I think I made two LGBT ones and then I just didn't make any more. I have lots of them so I don't know why I stopped making them. This is the second one of my feminist recommendations. I'm gonna say now, don't go back and watch the old ones because <laughs> I had to go back and look at them to check what I'd recommended to make sure I didn't recommend it again. Oh, it just made me sad. So don't do that, it's not great. Also, I've got this like, repping for the vegetarians jumper on and it's making me very happy today. Uh, but yeah, this is the second one of my feminist recommendations. So like I said, I just recommend five books that I think are quite feminist, that I really enjoy. And I try and pick a range of books from lots of different genres, so there's something for everyone. So the first book I'm going to recommend is a graphic novel, and it's one that I have mentioned before, but I just absolutely adore it, so I just wanted to mention it again anyway. And it is Woman World by Aminda Dhaliwal. So this is a dystopian graphic novel, and basically men slowly died out not through any reason like someone tried to get rid of them just they just stopped being born just more and more women were born less and less men and suddenly they just like died out this is about like society when it's just women and as you can see just from the front cover of this book we've got women who've had mastectomies women with prosthetic legs women who look more like genderqueer just a lot of different people and that's the same throughout lots of different women represented lots of different relationships represented we also have characters of a lot of different ages so we have like young children characters we also have older characters so like there's a grandma in this who's quite old and i like that because i feel like a lot of ages aren't really represented in things these days it's more like let's stick with our 15 to 40 age range and not really go outside that and not show that people get older so it's cool for that the illustrations are super super simple but really effective and i absolutely loved them it's just a really funny book that's all about women and i absolutely loved it and i read it a year ago i think and i'm definitely feeling like i'm coming upon time for a reread i think it'll be a good one to read next month for non-fiction november it'll be a fun graphic novel to cut up the like heavy reads which is me saying heavy reads about non-fiction is the reason I don't read non-fiction so I shouldn't say it would recommend this absolutely love it very 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 feminist and very very cool and lovely and yes plus I never hear anyone talk about Aminda Dhaliwal I don't think she is very known so it would be nice if more people knew who she was because this is a very cute graphic novel and I love it the next book I want to recommend is The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss this is a literary fiction book it is about a dad called Adam who gets a call saying that his daughter daughter has stopped breathing at school. He goes and she's okay but no one knows why she stopped breathing and obviously like this book is concerned with him freaking out that she's going to stop breathing again and her kind of needing her independence from them but them needing constant reassurance that she's okay. That's kind of where this story goes. There's the obvious feminist element in this which is the daughter Miriam. She is 15 and she is very vocally feminist. She's very like, fuck the patriarchy. She has badges and everything. She's very, very cute and I love her so much. But that's not the reason that I'm recommending this book. The reason that I think this book is really cool is because of Adam himself. So Adam is a writer, so he stays at home and does his writing. He is basically a stay at home dad as well. So he looks after the kids because he's at home. And in this book, we deal with the stuff that he has to go through because he's a man looking after his children and not a woman. So there's a scene in the swimming baths when he takes his daughter swimming. He doesn't want to take her in the male changing room with her because he doesn't want her to see everything because she's quite young. So he sends her in with one of the other mothers so he can't go and help her get changed. And she goes in with one of the other mums and then this person comes up to him and is like, why are you hanging around outside the changing room? No, 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 I'm going to report you. And is basically like calling him a paedophile for standing outside the changing room and he's like... I couldn't go in there with my daughter like what what the fuck are you doing and I just I think it's such a good book for showing that side of things because I definitely noticed that a lot with my dad because my dad was a registered carer for my sister so he would only work on the weekends so during the week he was basically like a stay-at-home dad for me and my sister so he would do all the cooking do all the cleaning do the washing do all that stuff and 
I remember like he used to walk me to school every day and, and I remember all the mums would be in the playground just chatting and when he picked me up from school he'd always be like sat on a wall away from them. So I think it was really cool to read that from my perspective because I was like I basically had this, that's like what my dad did. And yeah I would really recommend this book. I know it did its rounds and I know it was quite popular at the time but I feel like people don't talk about it as much anymore and especially just for that sort of stuff with the dad I think it's really cool so yeah there's that one. The next book I'm going to recommend is a book that I finished the other day and it is The Burning by Laura Bates. This is a YA book and obviously Laura Bates is quite famous for starting the Everyday Sexism Project and she's wrote some non-fiction books about feminism like The Everyday Sexism Project, Misogynation and Girl Up which I've only not read Misogynation so far. This book follows a girl called Anna and she moves to a new school we don't really know why she moves to a new school but we know that it's been rushed and she doesn't have a phone, she doesn't have social media and she doesn't really want to talk about what's happened before but we can tell something's happened. There's kind of like a PTSD kind of behaviour going on where like her heart will start racing and she'll be like hyperventilating and all this sort of stuff when certain events happen and this book goes into what happens when her past catches up with her and it's a lot to do with young girls and bodies being treated as commodities and as things to be consumed instead of being like a part of you and like yourself. Absolutely love this. One of my favourite things about this book is the detachment that Laura Bates gets across when a part of your body has been commodified you basically like detach from it so there's pictures of her on the internet she looks at them and she doesn't even see that that's herself she's like that's not even me that's not my whatever it is. Um, I don't really want to go too, into too much because I don't want to give you spoilers but it's a very good book and I really enjoyed it because it had a really strong positive message to the end of it. I would say it's very similar to Asking For It by Louise O'Neill but the sad thing with Asking For It, it's, it's the genius thing about it but it doesn't have a very satisfying ending and the reason for that is that most rape cases don't have a satisfying ending most people you know don't get prosecuted and it's a very horrible statistic when you look into it however it does leave it a bit like oh the world is fucked <laughs> oh my god whereas finishing this is very empowering she feels empowered by the end of it and i really liked that so it does go down a very different route from louise o'neill who i feel like just oh she's just she's too blunt and it hurts i love it but it hurts so i'd really recommend this i think it's a great read and i'm so glad that it's a ya book and a book for teenagers i think this would have been such a great book to read as a teen i would have absolutely ate it up so yeah recommend that one the next book i want to recommend is a non-fiction and that is girls will be girls by emer o'toole dressing up playing parts and daring to act differently you may be aware of emer o'toole if you are english and i don't know what age you'd have to be but basically i became aware of emer o'toole because she was on i think it was this morning it was one of those kind of shows in england and she was on it because she had body hair. Like they actually invited someone on their show because she decided not to shave or wax her body hair. And that was the reason they invited her on the show. How fucking stupid is that? Like, I can't. But basically she made this like big thing of the fact that she wasn't shaving her legs, she wasn't shaving her armpits, she was just gonna be herself, gonna grow whatever, she wasn't bothered. Which is really, really cool, very empowering message. And this book goes into that, and it also goes into a lot of different like times that she played with gender and how that went. So she is very conventionally beautiful by society standards, and she goes into, like when she shaved her head and how people reacted to her and times that she went out in like a male drag and how people reacted to her and it's all that kind of stuff and the thing that I loved about this is she does occasionally touch on academic sides and statistics and stuff like that but I would say she doesn't actually do that a lot she keeps it a lot more conversational and I think it makes it a lot more of an accessible read and a lot more fun to read just because it is like so many anecdotes about gender I think it is nice in that way so would really recommend this especially if you are like dipping your toes into non-fiction feminism this is a great place to start because it just 
it isn't heavy it's just kind of i tried this and this is how people reacted to me is that the right way that people should react blah 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 like it's that sort of a thing so love this would highly recommend it could be a great read for non-fiction november if you're taking part it's very very good and then the last book i'm going to recommend is almost love by louise o'neill i haven't taken any of the stickers off it yet because i haven't done a book haul for this book yet and i'm just amazed that i got it so cheap and with all the exclusive content so like i need to gush about that but i'll gush about it in my book haul i won't gush about it here i have read this book quite a while ago i listened to it on audiobook which i would highly recommend because it's set in ireland and the audiobook has the irish accents and there's also a lot of irish names in here i think i would have really tripped up on if i was reading it because i wouldn't have known how to say them so listening to it on audiobook was really good because it just pronounced them for me i didn't have to worry about that too much but this book follows sarah she basically had a past relationship where somebody wasn't invested in the relationship treated her like shit but she really liked them and so she kind of let them treat her like that even in the moments where she knew she was being treated badly she would let it go just because it was like I'll let it go because I, I just want him I just want him and this story takes place after that she's in a new relationship but it's sort of the impact that that past relationship has had on her future relationships not just with her partner but with her friends friends she used to have with her job with her relationship with art so like she wanted to be an artist um, and it's her relationship with that as well. What I love about this book is it delves into topics that people don't talk about that much but are really important. So it talks about pleasure and the fact that Sarah like sacrifices all of her pleasure for his to make him happy instead of being like, I need to be happy in this relationship as well as you for it to work. She is also basically just treated as like a booty call, like come and meet me in this hotel and she lets that happen and she is treated absolutely horrifically in this book and one of the things is that she isn't nice she is a very unlikable narrator but i think that works so much better because it's like people don't have to be likable for you to feel sympathy for them it's one of the things that i really liked with asking for it by louise o'neill as well where emma isn't very likable and she isn't a very sympathetic person but that doesn't change the fact that she's being raped and she still should demand some feeling for that. It doesn't matter if you're not the pretty prom queen 16 girl getting raped. Like if you're someone who is promiscuous and you get raped, that should be taken just as seriously. That's that's the sort of thing that I love about Louise O'Neill. She really delves into that kind of topic and I loved that Sarah isn't likeable in this. I thought that worked tremendously well and just made the book feel even more important because if it was someone likeable, I feel like it would be a story we'd seen before. And this is definitely my favorite of Louise O'Neill's books that I've read so far. I've only not read one of her books. Her first debut book I've not read. I've read Asking For It and The Surface Break. I really enjoyed both of those, but this is definitely my favorite. This is her only adult one. I don't know what it is. I just think it's so well done. Her writing style the fact that her all her other books are YA books it works so well because Sarah in it is kind of she seems so selfish because she's so caught up in her own head because she's so obsessed with this guy that she used to be with but it works so well because that's what YA is YA is a really intense genre and it is really in people's head so that kind of background of writing that she's come from i think works tremendously well in here just i really like this book it's tremendous just the stuff that it talks about love this one that's the last one that i was going to recommend thank you very much for watching this video these are all the books that i'm recommending today as you can see it's quite a mix i tried to pick a mix on purpose because yeah not everyone likes the same kind of genres these are all fantastic and i would recommend them if you've read any of them please let me know down below what you thought of them or if you have any feminist recommendations you could also leave me those in the comments because i like feminism and yeah i will see you in my next video bye